and the ability to work and find work easily, I think, is really amazing here, um, especially for international students. If you're looking to support yourself or support your families back home while you're going to school, um, it's pretty easy to find work and kind of find that balance between things. So I would say opportunity more than anything. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Demar. And as usual, you know, I've tried to provide useful information for you guys who have been subscribed to my channel. Please, if it's the first time you're watching one of my videos, guys, please hit that subscribe button, like, share, and please leave a comment. Let me know what you want to know. I'm happy to use my experience to guide someone. So today I'm joined by this lovely lady on your screen here. Her name is Brianne Reddick. She is one of my instructors here, and let me just say she's a wonderful person for even agreeing to do this interview for you guys. I hope that the questions that I asked would be useful for someone and that tips and advice would be definitely beneficial for someone as well. So, Brian, how's it going? Great, how are you doing? Uh, it's Sunday. It's usually my relaxing day, but here I am taking you away from your family. And now I feel awful. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing. It's so, my honor, so thank you for asking me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. So Brian, tell me a little bit about yourself. I am a post-secondary instructor at a college at the moment. Um, and I teach marketing management and communication students in their first, second and third years, either in a certificate, diploma or undergrad program right now. Okay, okay. So you said that you're an instructor here uh, in Canada, obviously, and you teach management, marketing, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch the third one. Uh, communications. Communications. So is that something that you like doing? I love it. Uh, the way that it came about was very untraditional. Um, I've learned since being in the post-secondary role that most instructors don't actually um, endeavor to be an instructor. And it's just something that comes along with being in the world of academia. Um, and for me, it was purely accidental. And it was a very serendipitous um, kind of role that ended up coming my way that I was not expecting to love as much as I do. Okay, my next question will be leading directly based on that. So you obviously have a lot of experience in this field that you've been doing for a few years now. Based on your experiences as obviously an instructor here in Canada. So for that prospective student who is at home, probably here in Canada or in another country, what would you say to them? Uh, one thing I think is really important is learn how to fail. This is something that I did not learn until it was too late, I think, because we live in this environment in North America where our parents are telling us to go after our dreams. And if you find the right job, it'll feel like you never have to work a day um, in your life. And then we also have this kind of perspective where um, we're encouraged to have stability and get mortgages at an early age and set ourselves up financially. So it's this really interesting contrast, I think, that um, the Gen Xers and the early millennials really deal with and battle with because it's a very kind of opposite um, reality on both sides of the coin. So what I'm trying to say with all of this is learn how to fail, learn how to um, not do well on certain things and learn how to pick yourself up and be able to move forward. I see a lot of students that get caught, uh, especially in the first semester, or first year of college, who don't get the marks that they're expecting because we're at a new level of academic work um, or they fail at something and they're not chosen for something, et cetera. And it really bothers them and it really gets them down. And more often um, than not, unfortunately, those students that weigh very heavily with failure end up going out of the system in school. So I would say be prepared to fail. It's part of what is going to help you to grow and take advantage of your education um, and also just make you more of a resilient and um, really prosperous person in the work field afterwards. I strongly agree as well. Uh, I have another question for you here, Brian. So I know you teach, uh, you have your area of focus that you teach, and you are probably going to be biased to those areas. But being a professional, right, in Canada, and also having a, a number of students who obviously has passed through your, uh, I'd probably say tutorage, if that's even a word, is there an area that you find that students may get uh, more success from if they choose to focus on a particular area of study per se? 
That's a really good question. Um, I have an interesting answer for that, I think, but I'm gonna warn you, first of all, it's probably a little bit unconventional. Um, I am currently a master's degree holder in business admin and working on my doctorate, which makes me sound like I'm very school oriented and have been in the educational system for a long time, um, but that is not the case. So I've got over 20 years of direct business experience, um, mostly in relationship management and then in marketing roles, PR roles, event management roles. Um, but again, always coming back to that relationship management part. Um, I got started off in a very strange way with post-secondary when I was just out of high school, didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I ended up going into college to try to learn about addictions counseling. Okay. Um, and I realized later on in hindsight, this was something that I was doing for myself to try to make sense of some of the childhood trauma that I had been through. Okay. Um, and as you can imagine, it was a very expensive therapy session. So, uh, I can college imagine. is not college is not the place to go for therapy uh, with everything that is associated with it cost wise. So lesson learned, um, but not taken to heart because I did it again in art, art history uh, later. And again, looking back on it, I think I was trying to bring some sophistication or maturity into my life that I maybe felt was missing. Uh, while I was in university, I ended up meeting a gentleman who was a fashion designer. And he put together these really amazing events that were kind of curated um, to combine fashion and music and a little bit of art and culture as well. Okay. So I ended up working for him for a number of years, which led to a move to Europe um, in Malta. And I lived in Turkey for a while doing fabric buying and helping him to expand his business out in Europe. From that, it led me to another connection where I lived in London, England for a while working for a music agency. Um, and in that role, I carried all of Canada and Mexico as part of my territory. So I was jet setting all over the place and living this really cool <laughs> life. Um, and if it had not been for those opportunities and the decision to kind of go with my gut when it came to the role and the opportunity that I first had, I'm not sure I would be where I am today, um, especially educationally. So. Long story short, I ended up coming home. Um, I met somebody at home when I was here on a trip uh, and we kind of hit it off. And again, I listened to my gut. I left my job in England and came back to Calgary, Alberta, which is my hometown um, and rewind a decade and a half later, almost, I think at this point, um, it was a good decision. So um, I think that you have to go back to school and be ready for it. And this can sometimes be defined by your life stages or something that's going on life-wise um, as far as what you want and desire at that point. And let me just jump in a bit. I think, I think you are giving some very good um, points here in terms of there's absolutely no straight line to say uh, do this or do that in an effort to really make a transition or to be successful in life, right? And I really get that you're saying that your experience is what shape who you become and also decide what you study, right? Uh, just to dwell a bit on something you said, you mentioned that you lived in Turkey, you mentioned that you lived in England, you mentioned that you are from Calgary. And I know from conversation that we have had before that there are a few other places that is not on that list. Uh, you're making yourself sound very old, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I am old. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I got started in business at a very early age, which is um, kind of the kickstart to my obsession with business management and relationship marketing and management. And it just continued on. And I've been so blessed with career opportunities, um, again, just because I listened to my gut at that time. So even though I was not ready for post-secondary at the time, um, I definitely had a career in place of that for the time that I was in it. Um, that really made up for it as far as experience is concerned. But you know, the end of the story, I went back to school eventually. I did an associate's degree, which led to a master's degree. And now I'm currently working on my doctorate. So um, again, it's life stages and individual to each person. And then here we are 30 years later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my other question is, Brian, what would you suggest to a student who is currently in school and they're not sure or they're gonna be making a transition into the professional uh, sphere. How can they transition from being a student to being a professional? What would you say towards that? That's a really great question as well. So as a student, I would encourage anyone and everyone to take every opportunity that comes your way. Um, if you make good relationships with your instructors, you may find that there are opportunities that will come 
just from that relationship that uh, you have with them because of the connections that are associated in the community and with other instructors and throughout the school. So if you have an opportunity that comes your way that may allow you to get some experience to put on your resume um, or to give you something to talk about later in an interview, I think it's definitely worth pursuing those um, experiences, even if you're short on time, even if it's tough at the time to make it work, um, you may end up getting some really pleasant surprises out of it. So professionally, if you are given an opportunity to learn or grow in any way, take advantage of it for sure as you transition into the real world. Perfect. All righty. So is, is, there, is there a cutoff age as to being a student or oh, old is too old to, to go back to school? How old is too old? I had a client in my previous sales job. She was 91, I believe, when she graduated with a um, diploma. So she had always wanted to do this diploma program and finally decided at the age of 80 something that she wanted to go back. So I don't think there's ever an age that is too old for <laughs> education. It's one of those things you can always come back to, which I really love about it. Okay, you know, uh, there are prospective students all over the world who wants to study in Canada, who would love to study in Canada. As an actual instructor in Canada, what would you say are some of the benefits of studying in Canada? So I'm an international student, actually, I should mention in my doctoral study, studies, excuse me, um, I am a student in Australia, cur currently living in Canada. Um, so I also am an international student, even though I'm not physically there. But Canada is such a, an amazing country because of the diversity that we have. We have such a massive land space that the culture right from the East Coast to the West Coast are kind of two different worlds as far as Canada is concerned. Um, because of that, if you're studying in Canada, you have the opportunity to travel to all of these really amazing places from mountains and oceans in the same area um, to places like our national parks that have all sorts of wildlife running around and just really is unlike anything you may have seen. Um, that's a little bit too wild, wild, if I'm being honest. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Didn't see my first moose until I was here up in northern Alberta. So, <laughs> um, But as well, I think if you are looking to immerse yourself in English, this is a really great place to do it because um, we have different dialects and different accents, again, from east to west. Um, so you'll get a little bit of that experience. And as well, we're, we are bilingual, so we have a uh, large French province um, in, this, in the country as well. But... The opportunities really are endless. We're always kind of developing and cities are getting bigger and the ability to work and find work easily, I think is really amazing here, um, especially for international students. If you're looking to support yourself or support your families back home while you're going to school, um, it's pretty easy to find work and kind of find that balance between things. So I would say opportunity more than anything. Got it. And I think that's a very good Obviously, I'm an international student here in Canada. All of my viewers know this because I share a lot of stories with them. But uh, of course, Brian, you know this as well. And I am from Jamaica. My other question is, what do you know about Jamaica? Uh, I know you are from it and you're wonderful. <laughs> and I really enjoy uh, conversation and study with you. So <laughs> I, I really like Jamaica just based on that. Alrighty. Well, I have a few Jamaican words here, Brian, that I'm going to put you on the spot and you're going to have oh, to great. repeat <laughs> after me. So, are you ready? I hit me. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So the first word is Licklemore. Licklemore? No. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's, it's pretty much saying, I'll see you later. It's little L-I-T-T-L-E. But instead okay. of spelling it with a, a T, you spell it with a K. So L-I-K-L-E? L-I-K-K-L-E. Licklemore. 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 Ah, perfect. You <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I got that right. I feel like that's what I said in the beginning. <laughs> you got it right. You got it right. And uh, the last one that I'm going to have for you here, Brian, is Wagwan. Wagwan? You've been here before. This is not your first rodeo. <laughs> you, got it, you got it right. And thank you so much for joining me today and uh, being such a good sports woman. I really love the fact that you tried to be as thorough as possible. And I'm sure that someone somewhere will appreciate this video. Thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to say as we close this video? I uh, just said I think it's really awesome that you're doing these videos because I really understand how scary it must be for an international student to come over on their own. 
Um, and I always worry about the new students that are here in Canada for the first time and trying to find a community when they first land. So I think it's really amazing that you're doing this and reaching out to those students that are debating whether or not a Canadian education might be a good decision for them. So thank you for doing that for, for the, the world in general. And thank you for teaching us. <laughs> okay, My thank pleasure. you so much.